Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench and this is just going to be a quick video about what I'm doing with this kit. If you remember a couple of weeks ago, or a week ago, whatever it was, I did a review of the AH64E Apache interior from this company here, Red Fox Studio. Um, I did buy this, it wasn't given to me, so that's why you haven't seen the paid promotion sign. Um, so basically what I'm going to do in this video is just go through what we're doing how we're going to go about modifying the cockpit and everything to take this. Well, I've done it already. If you want to see me working on this, if you go over to Ice Queen 7's channel or Plastic Monkey's channel, I'll put a link in the uh, description down below, down here. Um, and you can go and watch me on Saturday, the 29th of May, 2023. I was sat here and I was doing all the sanding and removing all the, the raised areas so we could fit this cockpit. So basically, it's very, very simple stuff. It's very much like, you know, Edward or your other, um, you know, um, photo etch people. You're basically removing raised detail so that you can fit these panels. And these aren't sort of photo etched. They're 3D printed. And you can see they've all come off the back end and all loose in there. But they have a lovely bit of texture to them. And all the knobs and switches are all raised. So it gives it that proper three-dimensional look rather than the 2D look you get with photo etch. So, um... So there you go, and it's got here how you fit it all and where it all goes. And you've also got the option of the powered up or the powered down display, which is really nice. So you've got nearly two of everything. You could probably do another instrument or another instrument panel, certainly with those main displays. So if you've got the old Kangnam kit or the current Academy kit, then um, you could use them in that perhaps. I don't know. Um, in fact, no, it's probably too early, isn't it? So uh, here we've got all the parts laid out so you can identify them from there of what they are. So it's a very nicely presented little set. And if you didn't see the review, go back and have a look. It's worth having a look at Red Fox Studios, www.rfstudio.heyu. They're in Hungary. It's worth having a look at their site because they have a lot, a lot of stuff on there. And it's very, very nice. They do 48th and 32nd and 35th. So um, picking up the kit. Uh, it's the AH64E. I'll just grab the box so you can see which one it is. It's the Guardian. And I'm doing that. I've got the D as well, but I'm doing this one first because I want to see how it goes together because I would like to sort of super detail one and have it a D um, as in a well used, you know, pretty weathered up, whereas this is going to be fairly new. So um, we'll see how it goes together. Now, Typical sort of tack home, we've got the, um, the sprue call outs here. There's only a couple of sprues different, I guess maybe even one sprue different from this and the D. It's got different rotor blades as well, and obviously different decals and photo etch and everything. But um, basically the kit goes together pretty much the same. So you can see here, I've got the cockpit um, part laid out, and the cockpit is just covered in these two steps. It's fairly simple, but nicely detailed. There are a couple of omissions, which I'll cover in a second. Um, and also the detail is very, very nicely molded. But what I'm finding is there is a lot of cleanup required. There's a lot of flash. There's a lot of seam lines, like on these tiny little control levers here, A31, the tiny little, you know, throttle levers. They had a great big ring of seam line. Well, you know, it took a hell of a lot of cleaning up. And when you look at the size of them, you know, they're, they're absolutely tiny. And they had a great big thick ring of seam all the way around them. Um, something else that's a pain in it complete pain in the bum and is very bad design they've got ejector pin marks here which I can understand okay you've got these parts here have got to be pushed out at all that's fine so they've got ejector pin marks there which need to go they're recessed so they need to be filled a lot of the other ejector pin marks have come across have been raised the other problem which is a very very bad design they have ejector pin marks here and here if they could have put them there and there they would have been hidden by the seat as you can see but no they put them there and there if they put one there it would have been covered by the headrest but no they put them there and there where you can see them right at the top of the cockpit so thanks for that good design in well done um you know they could have put one in the middle there and perhaps one and one there because I, I should imagine this takes quite some pushing out of the tool but uh yeah so in fact it's slide molded isn't it So yeah, um, again, please engineers think when you do this, think where you put your ejector pin marks. Tammy are doing a pretty good job and, uh, and the wingnut wings were very good at it. Um, also on here, we've got these two panels, where are they? 
here we've got M18 and M19 go on top of M5, and this is for the um, for the, the pilot's uh, cop. The pilot sits at the back, the gunner sits at the front, and on the edge of there, there's like a ridge of, it looks like a foam material, um, and it's quite sort of definite, like a square section, and it's very, very softly moulded, so I sanded it off, and I've added a couple of bits of little strips of plastic card just to do that, so it's going to have to spray that black again this is all just primer really it's all mr surfacer and it's all just primer just to see where we are um, and also you've got the center armor piece here q20 which goes in um, and once again i've got the brilliant art scale kit masking set this is the double sided you can also get double sided with masks for creating inside rubber around windows so that'd be nice it's got a white line around there so um save that one for the d I'll use this one for the E um, and they also include the mask for this armor plate which is brilliant because you've got this area in the center here which I believe is going to be black and obviously you've got the frame all around the side and um, I'm not sure if this is armored or not but it is a sheet between the co the, the pilot and the gunner so if um, they both have controls so if the pilot or the gunner gets taken out the other guy can bring the helicopter home safely or one is seriously injured or whatever but they do have a lot of armor protection apparently the the glazing in the cockpit is up to two inches thick. Um, it shows here, that part there, they're calling it Q29 here, it's actually Q20, and they're showing it fitted to the interior of the, um, of the cockpit glazing. Now, you can't do that, because if you do that, you can't fit that part there, M14, and you won't know where it's got to go, to get it to go into this slot here so I would suggest it's probably best to put it in there they also show this cabling um, where do they show it I'm sure I've seen it somewhere you can see it here oh there you go 180 millimeter they've got this cabling going around and that is actually a cable that goes front to back and there's a piece of photo watch there and it goes all the way around all the way around there okay so it's going back to back so it's front to front actually not front to back um, and it goes through, I'm not sure if you can see them in here now, but there are two holes in here and it goes through that. So it's going to be a bit awkward to do. Maybe just leave that bit of cable out or whatever. Um, but we're going to have to somehow fix that through those holes. So either that or I suppose you could just cut a couple of slots in there and let the cable go through. Or, or indeed you could join the cable up through that, I suppose. But I don't think you'll be able to do that and then slot that on because they're showing it, as you can see here. It's already fitted to the to the cockpit, but they're showing it there as fitted to the glazing, so a bit awkward there. Um, yeah, the other thing I've noticed, uh, when it comes to doing this here, and I hope this isn't going to be a theme with the whole instructions, you've got here, you've got TPD2, and it's just saying there, it's, it's like, it doesn't show how it goes, there's no finished photo of it fitted anywhere. Well, I had a look at some um, cockpit images, and if you ask me, it goes, this is the uh, gunner's site, and it goes in the bottom there. You can see the photo etch. You can see that piece of photo etch in there, look. If I bring the light a bit more over, it'd probably make things a bit better, wouldn't it? You can probably see that photo etch there. Okay, so um, that's where it fits. There's like a little step in there for it to go into. So I think that's how it goes anyway. Um, so yeah. Got everything painted black and we're good to go. So um, I'll get on get the cockpit assembled. We've also got to paint some areas inside here, so the fuselage. We've also got a lot of holes to drill out. Make sure you're drilling the right ones. They're obviously the same fuselage halves for the D and the E and all the others they're going to be making. And there's going to be different holes to be drilled. And then I'm going to get on and build up this um, this rotor head assembly. And uh, this in here, you've got check your references I've seen some are like a sky blue color some are like a, a very very pale um, zinc chromate color so good to have a good old look at your references and check it would appear that the E's are mainly the sky blue color which is I'm gonna have to mix up I think it's gonna be um, I think it's gonna be like a mix of XF 23 and XF 21 or maybe XF 23 and XF 12 I don't know, we'll have a look when we get there and I'll show you what I do, but uh, it's a very, very pale blue. Have a look at the references. There's a great factory. If you put um, Apache factory in YouTube, there's a great video on there. It's an electronic bloody 
Today we have been with this electronic voice and there's loads of adverts in it and they're non-skippable but it's worth watching because there's lots and lots of interesting shots in there. So there we go. So um, I've also got to remember to put that piece in before we uh, put the fuselage halves together. So there we go. Right. I'm going to get on with something and then I'll come back. Um, probably after I've got this all glued together because I'm going to get this all glued together and then get it all painted in black. So uh, I'll see you back in a minute. Right. Um, this is proven to be a bit of a nightmare, but uh, we will push on. Right, I'll show you something. Um, here we talk about drilling the holes. We've got 0.7 mil holes and we've got one millimeter holes. As I say, make sure you get the right ones because there's some here. But you can see in this one here, you've got like those two there. But you can see there you don't drill them. And then you've got those two vertical holes there, you don't drill them. So obviously for the different versions, they're gonna have different, um, different lots of holes. Um, something I did want to show you is when you look up in here, it shows you that these holes have to be drilled and, and what I've done is come in, if I imagine this is my drill, I've come in on the steepest angle I can and drilled through and it's given us two holes here. Now, all that is is a couple of units going there, a couple of obviously ECM or weapons units or something, electronic warfare units, whatever they are. Um, they're going to go on there and there's two pins. So obviously if it means it pushes them out too far, We'll just cut the pins off it's going to cover the holes anyway because they may have calculated it so that you can actually go like that with the drill but obviously when you've got the drill you can't go like that you have to go on an angle like that so it could be that they're over too far but we shall see it doesn't really matter you could just leave them and put the parts there um i'll just cut the pins off and here uh it's got a 0.7 millimeter hole and you can see that's in a recess again that is like drill at the back don't cut it out it's not like, you know, sometimes you get, you have to cut this whole little section out. It's actually to drill a hole in there. If you look through the instructions, you'll see and there's another little unit going on there. So um, that's the uh, fuselage holes taken care of. When we turn the page, we're starting on the rotor head. Now, this needs a lot of care and attention. It also needs a little bit, I have to open these holes out in here in parts F24 and F23. I open them out to 1.1 mil to allow F18 to fit down in between. Um, don't glue F42 at this point um, and these F18 glue them together and then just put them down on the bench so that they're all square and level and everything it's, you're making that assembly there and the trouble is you won't determine the position this part F42 goes until you get way up here um, when it comes to assembling this this is just an absolute mess instructions wise it is terrible um, seeing how it all goes now the holes, this part here, F38, has little keys on the holes so that F39 and F40 feel only fit on it in one orientation. So that's great. So you'll end up with the rod F38 with the two parts on it. The trouble is where that goes on there, I'm going to show you all this in a minute, where that goes on there, there is no positive location. It could go anywhere. And then they're telling you here to put this together like that. And it's like, what? what's going where you know it, what it's oh. so what I'm going to do I've, I've got this put together here I'm going to take this off okay what I'll show you is I'll show you this assembly here now this is moving forward this is F44 that's the main shaft F52 which needs to be able to turn okay and then here I've got F43 and F7 fitted which is going way forward now what they're suggesting is you fit all this together like this now glue that in and then fit these parts after F43 and F7. Well, I would suggest not doing that. I would suggest what I've done is just got all this dry fitted. Where's my tweezers here? I'm just going to squeeze this one back in. Just going to squeeze that back together. I've got this all dry fitted. Now, I found when I fitted this one, F43 and F7, I found that this was extremely tight to turn. So what I've done is sanded some material away from this face here on both parts okay you can see they go together like that right so you're sanding material from this face here to make that ring turn easier the other thing i've done is fitted this part in here remember these have got wide and narrow slots to correspond with wide and narrow grooves so i fitted that part in there and then i fitted all this together so this assembly here is going to sit in those two holes there 
like so and then we can slide this down in and that piece falls off which I knew would happen because the camera's on but that will give you the position of this is going to you can see it's just off it's all just falling apart on me you can see it's just off vertical okay so it's it's just just leaning in like you could just glue it and then you could play with it afterwards but I've left it off until I got to that far and then I knew where it has to go as I say these instructions could have been done a lot differently so with this assembly here as I say you have no idea where anything has to go where it glues or whatever and like I said you've got this point here this F39 is gluing onto F6 and that is here okay so F39 is this piece here and F6 is this piece here and you can see there is nothing to actually position that so just don't glue it on okay glue F38 F39 and F40 together making sure you've got the keys lined up and then let that go fairly hard and that will then clip on there and it'll, it'll float around with this one here, as I say, you've got no idea where F42 is going to go, so don't fit that. But we've got F18, we've got F24 and F25 there, and we've got F... Yeah, that's right, F23 and F26. If you get these two mixed up, if you get F24 and F23 mixed up um, side to side, okay, so when you've assembled them, if you end up putting this assembly on the top and this assembly on the bottom, it won't go together. Look closely the instructions and you will see the difference f23 has the bracket at the, at the top f24 has the bracket at the bottom that's because the other half of the bracket is on these parts here f39 and f40 and you can see where they go together into there so that's going into there that's going into there okay this end is going into here Okay, on these bits on par F6. All right, so what I'm going to do is just, if you've got this kit, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to hold this up for you. I've actually, I'm going to hold this up for you and move it around and then you can pause it and still it and that so you can see how it goes, how it all goes together because the instructions, I found them very confusing. Okay, so I'll turn it around like that so you can see there. And I'll hold it on its end. On its side, from the front, from the side, like so, and from the bottom. Okay, so you can see there how that goes. It's a, it's very nice because it's very very accurate by the looks of it, and it's all to scale. It's all very fine, but it makes for a very very fiddly build. And the guy who wrote the instructions, <laughs> mm. um. And then that is in turn, we've got this assembly here. So I've got F51 glued down. I've got F54 glued to the um, glued to F51. And then you can see we've got these legs here, 58, 59, 60, and 61. And they're all kind of keyed, so they can't you can't get it wrong. If you notice, let's use a pointer, this pin here is fatter than that pin there. So that goes that that part won't fit into there. And then if you notice on here. There is a step in the pin, so you can't get them right, wrong either. So you can get them all off the sprue, get them all cleaned up, get them de-seamed and everything, have them all nice, and then you can uh, fit them. I've just noticed this one here has got a bit of a sprue nib on it still, so I'm going to take it off and just get rid of that sprue nib. I've had somebody asking me what these this stick is that I use. Um, they're actually Flory Skinny Sticks. These are the skinny sponges, and unfortunately no longer makes them. If you're in the USA, Brett Marquette, High Altitude Scale Modeling, um, he was a seller of them. Whether he's got any left, I do not know, but Phil Flory has stopped making sanders. So there we go. So that's going to go together like that and like that. That's going to drop in there.
there we go you can see that and then this piece here where was that this piece here is uh, 55 that's going to go on and it's got these everything is keyed nicely so you can't go wrong uh, you can see you've got two holes there two pins there and two pins there and then you've got the corresponding holes so you can only put it together one way which is nice it's all very um in that respect it's beautifully engineered it's all keyed but with this assembly over here this this part here that is a nightmare but it goes together well it's just that the instructions aren't clear so the next time i do one it'd be easy but this time it was uh, it was not easy to work out where it all goes but anyway if it was all easy it wouldn't be so much fun with it and you can see that is keyed so it only goes in one way that's free to spin and then these pieces here the other the other change i'd make to the instructions if i were you is they're telling you to put this in put this in and then add these after f43 and f7 i'm going to add them now because I don't think it's going to be very easy to do once it's all together. Plus, I want to paint this. This area here is going, you can see I polished the plastic. That area there is going to be chrome. So I don't want to be handling it and gluing it and everything after it's painted. So what I'm going to do is glue it now. What I'll do is put a drop of cement in there. hope yeah it did capillary onto the bollocks I was hoping it wouldn't capillary onto that part but it has so you can turn that keep turning there we go and then these two little arms are going to go in these are a46 so they're going to go and you can see on one end you can see one end is a hole one end is like a half half hour loop so we have to make sure that's facing outwards so we're going to put that on like that no you can't have it facing outwards because they're twisted so i'm not exactly sure which way they're going to have to go I don't even know what they're going to fit onto. You see, these instructions are as clear as mud. They are bloody awful. Let me get, let me sort out where that's going to go on to in a minute. Okay, we got there in the end. Let me try and hold this together. So you can kind of see how it goes. So these arms, as you can see, the bottom end is open and the, the open end has to face backwards. So basically, I'll show you in a minute with the assembly taken apart. So that is how it's all going to go together. OK. And that is what you need to be. If I can hold it, you get a still. So you can see it from the different sides there. If I can hold it together and take the back. Oh, well, there we go. There's the back. Okay, so that should help you if you're a bit lost with these instructions, especially if you're a newer model, you, you should probably really be lost with them or put it back in the box by now. But basically, when you put this together like I have, you fit it onto here before you fit it onto there. Um, if you've got that little nub in there looking at you, that little nub in there, then they need to face away from the holes, need to face away. Okay, well, the half cut out because they're going to go over another part. So... There we go. So that's all like that now, and this will free to turn. So the rotor blades will turn. It looks like we're not going to be able to make this rotor blade come off, uh, which is a shame. Uh, it could be we could cut something or whatever. I don't know, but we shall see. We could always do it with folded rotors if we're worried about storage space. Um, so that's that gone together there. Uh, and that's about it, really. That's as far as I've got. And then what you do is you get all this put together, and then you fit it into the into the actual fuselage itself. Now you may wish to paint it at this stage, you may wish to move on and get it all, all put together. As I say, this area here, this area here has got to be chrome. So um, that's obviously, a, it obviously goes up and down hydraulically, whatever I'm guessing, or it's just a chrome shaft that's for, um, you know, for positive location in the sleeve below it. But uh, I'll do my research and see where the chrome starts and ends. I think it's going to end there probably on that rib there.
but we'll have to spray it gross back, let it go hard. I'll use LP1 uh, because we don't need a primer with that. And then I can go over them with Alclad Chrome and then I'll give it an aqua gloss clear coat and then mask it off. It's a lot of work, a lot of waiting, but it's worth doing because it looks so good at the end of the day. So I'll see you when I've done that. Right, moving on here. Um, <clears throat> got a bit more work done. So we've now got this uh, mechanism here. This is all the tilt mechanism and everything. That's all fitted. And you can see we've got these little, these three little arms. That's F19, 20 and 21. Um, and then that glues in on those two little pins. So I'll just hold that there so you can kind of have a look and see how it all goes. You can freeze frame and have a look there. So um, one thing I'm noticing with these instructions, what they don't do, they don't show you anything how it looks when it's done. For example, you have these two parts here, P24, P23, and they're telling you to put them into the fuselage half. And here's the fuselage half here. I keep them in the bag so that the, the rivet damage, the rivet detail doesn't get damaged. But I've assembled this part, it's here, okay, and it's telling you that it goes in there. Okay, so I'm going to put that in there like that. Okay, that's the right way. So that's going to go into that hole and then it fits in there like that. Okay, so does it fit in there flush like that? Does it stick out? I mean, I'm assuming it's flush. And then you can see on the back of here, you've got the back of the scoop and then you've got those two little well, there's two legs in there you can see okay so I'm kind of thinking well how how should it go in there should it be flush or not so let's just have a look forward in the instructions and see what we can see so we've got it going in there there's no picture of it there and then here it's that section's cut off and this is the other side and then that's the other side and then we come to here and we can oh there we go you can see there but if you look at that close up It's absolutely nothing like that. I mean, so I'm, I'm assuming it goes flush on the outside and leaves a hole around the inside. And I, I, I assume some sort of ducting is going to go on there. I really don't know. Um, I guess when the engine covers go on, do they cover it up? I guess the exhaust cover it up. I, I really don't know. And it's very, very difficult. Um, you know, it, it's like, um, it's like here, you see, you've got this, this, this part, I've, I've started on the engines, so you've got this part here, and that's going to go into there, but then where does this end go? And you, when you come down here, you can see it's kind of coming down the side, so you, you can see it there, but there's lots and lots of places where you, you just don't know. I mean, I've been looking at the rotor head, and it's like on here, you know, you, you can see what all this lovely, you've got the, all the lovely bits and pieces for the folded rotor head, which is absolutely gorgeous and it's really, really nice. And I'm sure it's beautifully molded and everything, but they don't show you the rotor head in its folded position. I mean, maybe it's obvious where it all goes. I, I don't know. But, um, you know, it's like here, you've got the rotor head up together going onto the bottom there. Well, how are they fitting on there? And, and what's that? I guess that's that, is it? I don't know, what angle do they go on? It's just... It's just... Ugh. It's really, really difficult to... Um, to follow. So, uh, I, maybe you think I'm just moaning. Anyway, um, I've made a start on the engines. So I'll show you what I've done there. The engines are actually very nice. Um, they're very small compared to these sky crane engines. So I've got them in here. I've basically got these clamped together because I've put this ring, this ring here, L23, goes on to here. Um, and I'm, they're telling you to put it at the same time as that, but I wanted to put it all in now so that I can get everything painted. Now I haven't joined these together, but I have got that, that ring there, L23, is glued on. So I've just got the clamps in there. The other thing I found, some very, very soft moulding. It's like you can see on here, where's my pointer? You can see on here, 
you can see some white sprue goo and it's like all of the ends sort of, they're all very soft you can see I've done the same here you can see on here I've got some white sprue goo it's all very softly molded and it? and it's sort of instead of it coming round and being a nice sharp edge it's all rounded and leaves a big divot so I've just put sprue goo in there same on here sprue goo in there on both ends I've got these glued together they're keyed so they only go one way so we get all can be painted as one assembly and that is uh, L34, L33, L29 and L28 so that's all together in one piece so um so yeah all in all it's um it's it's all coming together what I'm trying to do at the moment is sort of work on assemblies as it were which is something you know I like to do and then we can get seam lines and I'm looking at these exhausts I think I might get these um these exhausts all glued together and then we can deal with those seams when they've gone dry and everything so uh but anyway onwards and upwards as they say by the way I forgot to show you I've done the chrome that's basically um, LP1 gloss black allow it to dry spray it with alkali chrome allow it to dry for I, I left it for about 12 hours and then I've given it a quick one going with aqua gloss. I masked off here and here so we didn't get a big build up because everything will start to fit tightly. So we've got that nice chrome look on that shaft now. And then once that's dry, we've got this tape here just to stop those arms flailing about and getting broken off. And once that's done, we'll get that glued into there. Um, I'm actually looking, it could be that we could actually um, not glue the part here when, when the rotor head goes on. Uh, as you can see here, you've got this part here, F53, which is on the bottom of the rotor head. Again, here you see, I noticed this in the instructions earlier. Look. Where, where does it go? It's like, where, where does that go in? I don't, it's very strange. Maybe when I got the parts off, it'll be obvious, but it's, uh, yeah. It's not up to the usual tackle standard of instructions. They're normally much better than this, but maybe the kits are simpler, so I don't know. But um, yeah, that's going to go in there. So you can imagine that upside down. That's going to sit on top of there. And there's no linkages below that, I don't think. So the linkages here are going into there. So I don't think there's any linkages below that one. So it looks like we'll be able to drop it down on so we can take the rotor head off um, if we don't decide to go to the folded rotor blades. But anyway, um, there we go. Okay, moving on a couple of days later now, and we've got lots of bit work done. So you can see I've masked off the chrome there. We've glued that mast into there. And I'm just going to do the same again with the still shots so you can see how it goes. Okay. So there you are. So hopefully, I know it's black and everything, it's difficult to see, but hopefully you can see there what it's like. So we've painted that black, we've painted the back of the bulkhead black because that's going to be in here and visible through there. Um, I've also gone in the sides here and just ran the edges of the cockpit uh, while I had the black paint out. I've also put that scoop in there and painted it black. Um, I'm assuming it goes flush. We'll find out if it's wrong and it's wrong, but uh, I'm assuming that's how it goes. I have no clue how it goes. The instructions, as I say, are dire. Um, so, been doing some research, and it would appear that the D variant in here is all like yellow zinc chromate, which would be like XF4. i show you quickly. That's roughly the colour XF4, okay? But it would appear that the E variant, that they all seem to have certain panels in this colour, and there's some darker green ones as well. Uh, but it would appear that the E variant has this light blue primer on it. If, if you go and look at there's many videos on YouTube of the Apache factory. I think they're all the same video. Some are reversed. They've just got different talking over them. Um, but basically, you can see the factories and they've got this color here. Now, I've mixed this up and this is XF23 light blue um, mixed about three to one with white. And then a drop of, um, I've put some XF71 cockpit green in there as well, just to give it a bit of a greeny tinge. And you can see now, if you look at the photographs of the videos, you'll see that's a, it's about the right colour. And also, it looks like there's a lot of detail missing from in here. You can't really see, unless you look down in there, you can't really see a lot of it. But there's a lot of, 
uh, pipe work and ribs and rivets and everything all over this. There's all ribbing and everything and supports and everything in here. But as I said, you can't really see it, so don't make too much fuss about it. But it would appear that the floor is this light green colour, light blue colour. This bulkhead is the light blue colour. And then up here is the light blue. You can see when you look at the skin, you can see that this part of the fuselage here is part of the fuselage. And this is a panel. Now, I'm not sure, I'm going to have to do some more, uh, see what colour, some, some more research, sorry, and see which colour this panel is. This back here all appears to be like a dark green colour. So I'm just going to spray that in like an olive drab colour, I think, matte, dead matte. This here is going to be the light blue, and then this panel on the inside will be a different colour. And I think what I'm going to do is use the, um, the black basing effect. So I'm going to go in and put some marble effects of white in here. Um, and all of this floor just to give it a bit of interest to break it up and then I'll lightly coat it with this I've made far too much of this I should have just mixed it up in the pot because I don't think I'm going to use it anywhere else but um, I've made way too much of this but uh, it's going to be handy it's obviously going to be used on other Boeing products so um, there we go I was also surprised to see a lot of these some of these uh, fuselages are made in India by Tata so uh, that's interesting um, probably part of a sales agreement that they did some work there but um, don't forget that there it mustn't be glued. That's got a spin, as I showed you earlier. And I've also removed all the paint from that as well. So when we put the rotor head on, it'll have a nice uh, joint. And I also um, masked it off when I sprayed the chrome and everything. Otherwise, you just get layer upon layer upon layer of paint. So uh, that's all black. So that's going to get that black and then uh, the blue. And then I'm going to be detail painting in the bottom of these supports and probably give them a dry brush in to make them look a little bit metallic but uh, it would appear that all of this here is like a sort of very very dark grey black sort of colour so we'll have a look at that so um I'll see you when we get there and um I'll get some paintwork done and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done okay so here we go we've got the uh, the light blue on there now the light bluey green colour whatever it is you can see the the mottling underneath there which just gives it that broken look I've got to go around and do some detail painting on here I'll brush paint that and get these arms all painted in um, and as you can see I've done the insides of the fuselage so we've got the light blue up here I cannot find a picture of the inside of this panel this removable panel here uh, but as you can see it's got that kind of funny shape in it so I've done that as well roughly you, you can't really see much in there and then we've got the olive green back there again you can see there it's all blotchy and everything with the with the white background showing through um, so quite happy with that the other thing I just wanted to say um, if you have got this kit it's worth doing this just bend this hold the side and don't go too mad because you'll snap it off but just bend these areas up because what happens I've already done this before so I can't show you what it's like if you don't do that but what you want to do is get your fuselage halves together Line the pins up get your fuselage halves together and put a straight edge across here because what you'll find on my kit anyway it had like a, a big valley in it so that would have been loads of filler and sanding and everything so just put a straight edge on there and you want it to be nice and flat all the way down and across the front here you want it to be nice and straight without a great big valley in the middle of it and then what you can do when we've got the when we've got it all glued together you can sort of manipulate it and just touch and get it all nice and flush and then that'll be a tiny little bit of sand in them to get that all nice and flat as you can see they've, they've cleverly done the join there along that hinge line so that's nice bit of mr servicer and a cotton bud to clean that out this will obviously need sand and we've got some raised rivet detail here that's going to be difficult to get around but uh, we shall see how we get on with that and uh, very very nice indeed it is so it's a lovely kit it really is a lovely kit but the the seam cleanup. Something annoys me. A lot of people call it burring. Um, I think it's a Phil Flory phrase. And people call it, you know, the the, the, the seam you get down the down the centre of the sprue here. They call it burring. It's not burring. Burring is a a result of cutting when it forces up an edge. If you if you drill a hole and you get a raised edge around it, that's a burr. Um, what well, it's a seam line. It's where the two halves of the mould come together. And obviously you're not going to get an absolutely perfect seam. You're going to get a little bit of a, a, an edge there. So obviously the more the tool wears on the edge, the bigger the seam. 
and this has got some rather large seam lines on it. That's what I'm talking about. When I say seam lines, I don't mean, I mean, this is a seam line where there's a seam, but there's also, it's a seam line on the part because it's the seam of the result of the seam of the two halves coming together. So there we go. Uh, that's my little run over. But uh, you can see that when we got this together, that's going to go in there like that. And you can see it's all going to look pretty nice down in there. As I say, I've, I've just shown you the fuselage halves together. In fact, what we'll do is we'll put that in there. And then we can drop this onto there. Like so. Get the pins lined up with the holes. There we are. You can see how much you can see down in it. You can actually see, I've got that bulkhead in, you can actually see the different colours in there. Well, I can anyway, because I can see it in the light. But uh, yeah, so I think it's good to have the, um, good to have the different colours in there just to make it stand out a bit. What else are you going to do, eh? I mean, I'm absolutely sick and tired of hearing about the bloody coronation. I mean, I, I'm not a royalist, but I'm not a, a Republican either. Um, I, I like the royal family, but I just don't want to hear about it day in, day out. Every bloody news station, everything you listen to on the radio, the TV, everything is just a bloody coronation. <laughs> Talk about something else. Right, let's get on with something else now. OK, so just to close out this, uh, this first part of this video, I'm going to do a little bit of a kind of tutorial type thing. Um, for those of you that don't know how to dry brush. So this is actually... This is very old, this paint. This is 218 Mr. Metal Colour. Uh, you need to be a bit careful because it's like an enamel based paint. So, and you also need to be careful when you open it over your model because bits of aluminium <laughs> are coming off of the lid. So, you can see in here it's all a bit lumpy and gungy and grudgy and stuff. I could actually give it a bit of a stir. But you can see it's um, it's kind of dried out. So but I'm not I'm not going to thin it because I don't really know what to thin it with. I'm guessing you could use leveling thinner. I'm not sure, but I think it's like an enamel based paint. Um, I only know that because I found I, I found out by mistake. I did, I painted something with it, put a wash on and the wash dissolved the paint. So you need to be a little bit careful. If you're going to use it for painting something, you need to seal it before you put a little wash on it or you have to use acrylic washes or something. So I'm going to do some dry brushing. So I'm just going to dip the paint, the brush. I've got a nice wide flat brush, which is great for dry brushing. And I'm just going to dip the brush in the paint. Now, you don't need to absolutely soak the brush in the paint, but you do actually want to get some paint in the bristles because if all you do is just get it on the tip and then dry, all you'll have is, is hardly anything on there. Now, you can see here how much of this is now coming off. And you can see now that brush is pretty much all silver okay now that is way too much okay that is way 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 too much so i'm just gonna i've got this cloth here i'm gonna remove a lot of this paint and i'm going to show you something here that will i may use you if you ever want to paint something i'll do it on the bottom of here no well, i'll do it on the back of here if you want to paint something aluminium and you want it to look really authentic don't worry about your primers don't worry about that if you dry brush your plastic with this stuff you can just look at the finish you get and this stuff remember is buffable so once it's down you can see on there how beautiful that looks and if I can find it let me see if I can just find something a second. Okay, this is what I was after. This is like a like a radiator grill. Okay, remember this is dry. You can dry brush that on. Just keep going over it. And look at the wonderful finish you get on that radiator. Now that will be nearly dry now because it takes no time to dry. Come on the cotton bud. I could buff it up. 
I mean, you need to leave it a bit longer than I'm leaving it, to be honest. But that is literally been two minutes since that went on there, three minutes. As you can see, I can buff it up. And if I get a piece of paper towel, I'll get rid of the marks from the cotton bud. And you can see now we have a lovely shiny surface. I can probably buff this up as well to get that nice and shiny. So it's great for that. Now, dry brushing. There's too much paint on here for dry brushing, especially when we're going over black. So what I'm going to do is, in the back of here, go into areas where it doesn't matter. We can just get some of the paint off. And you can see again, it almost looks like metal. It's so good. So what I'm going to do is dry brush this area here. So very very lightly i'm going to start down the bottom at the back because that's where i'm not really going to see it. i'm just going to check it's okay yeah it's okay as you can see i'm just very very gently going over this you can see the kind of finish we're getting now i don't want to change the color of it i still want it to be black but those rings I've seen, I've seen a picture of an Apache with the side door open. It looks like those rings are a bright, a bright aluminium colour. Okay, so this is, there is probably too much paint on this brush. I'm not, I'm hardly touching it and it's, it's, it's making it very, very silver. That's okay, it's fine. It's down in the dark. It's gonna, it needs to be sort of overdone. And I'll just get into there, get those, that cap there with the bolt heads in it. Like I say, we're not going to see any of this. Okay, so that's that done. Here we go. Now, I really want to take more paint off of here. I'm going to really, really go to town and get this thing cleaned off because it really is a bit too heavy. So I'm just going to very, very gently. And it's just to give it a bit of a metallic -y look. Now I've also got one here which is called Dark Iron, which is the same Mr. Metal paint, um, and that will also work. But I find it sort of makes everything look like cast, like cast iron or something, whereas this is just, what I'm trying to do is just accentuate the detail to make it pop because it's down in a dark place. See there the effect we're getting. So it's just picking up on the detail. And there we go. Just give that base a bit of a metallic look to it. And there we are. And then if we want to, we can come along with a cotton bud. It's a bit heavy. And just wipe it down. And there we go. Job done, as they say. And now you have like a kind of metallic look to it and as you can see when we look down inside here 
it will look a lot better because it's in the dark and we will have less vision of the brightness of it. So you can see when it comes together, you look down in there. I mean, even if I, get, if I can get the bloody light down in there, that is. It just sort of makes it pop a little bit, that's all. And then we can give it a wash. Um, I shall have to give it a, a, a clear coat first to seal it in. Then we can give it a wash and it will really, really accentuate everything then. So that's my little tip for you for the new modelers out there on uh, on dry brushing and it's very very easy be very very careful with silvers it's you can easily go way over the top and it look blimmin awful and if you do go over the top my best advice is paint it again start again don't try and remove don't try and remove it all right so there you are you can see that there as i say it's a bit over the top really but um, I'm glad in a way it is because it shows you just how far, how easy it is to go over the top. And you can just change the bloody colour of everything. But what I'm after here is like a metallic -y sort of look. It's in reality, they would just be painted black. But I'm after, I want to just give it some kind of look. So I'm going to give that a clear coat and a wash. And then uh, when I come back, we'll see how it looks. So thanks for watching guys, I will see you, all. no we won't call it a day there, I'll do the clear coat and the wash and then I'll call it a day. Right, so I've got my wash, this is my wash of choice, Modelers Rural Oil Washes, and this one is Industrial Dirt, and you can see I've got some decanted into an upturned paint pot. So, I've got the brush here, I use brushes which are dedicated for washes only. We can just paint this on over our clear coat, remember if you don't use the clear coat it will remove the dry brushing, so you have been warned. You just brush that in there and it will just run into all the detail and it will give it a very, very subtle sort of three-dimensional look. What's really nice about this stuff, I haven't found yet a plastic that it damages. Um, we know that some, certainly enamel washes, if you use them in areas like on tank tracks and stuff where they're multi-link they will just fall apart because they will attack the plastic and the glue joints will become so weak they can't stay together. I haven't found that with this stuff. If you have, please let me know and I'll report it to the world. But uh, I haven't had that issue. I'm just going to put some around the bottom just to pick up on those details. It just gives us something to look at down in that hole. I wish there was more detail on this surface here really, even if it was fake, it would just look good to have something there. And then what we can do is go up around here, get it all done. And as you can see now, that bright aluminium has been knocked back. It looks a lot brighter in the camera because the light's picking up on the aluminium, but in reality it looks like a it just looks like a a black dry brushed grey washed thing <laughs> which is I suppose what it is. So brush all that round there again adding to the it would never be this dirty in reality I don't believe but we just get something there just to give it a bit more of an interesting look and I'm going to do something in here as well. It's going to pick up on the ejector pin marks that I didn't bother removing but hey ho. There we go. And then what I'll do is come along in a minute with a cotton bud and just move it all around. Like I say, this is not trying to give it a dirty look. This is just breaking up that flat surface. This is why I did the, the marbling at the start. Bits of something on the brush there. Looks like it came off the actual bottle actually. So there we go. We can leave that 
for a couple of minutes, literally a couple of minutes, and then get a nice clean cotton bud, like so, and just just move it all around, as you can see like that. If you want to, you can roll the cotton bud over the surface. I'll give you a completely different look. You can leave it to dry. And you can just get, as you can see, you can get a dirty, sort of worn, stained. It's getting a bit repetitive, this, because I do the same on all my models. But if you haven't seen all my videos, then you won't have seen this before. But uh, it just gets that dirty sort of stained look to it. There you go. So it doesn't have that just plain blank yellow look to it anymore. Same on here. You can see this wasn't clear coated. You can see how it reacts differently on the painted surface rather than the clear coat. There you go, you can almost rub it all off but it still leaves that blotchy that blotchy look to it. See that one there. And then again over here we can wipe over this one. And just remove any excess wash. Get rid of that one, get a new cotton bud. Notice I'm using the soft Johnson's ones, not the harder ones that the lovely Simon Cousins got me. There we are. As you can see, just remove most of it, leave it to dry. You can do anything you want with it. If you don't like it, you can take it off with some odorless thinners. You can add more wash. You can do whatever you want. I just think it makes it... I just think it looks great if you're after that sort of mottled, used look rather than just an, a, a sort of just a one color canvas i managed to get some dust and bits in the paint down here when i painted it so it's picking up on that as well you can see the difference there to there it just sort of looks i don't know it just looks more worn used stained whatever it's just i just think it looks much much better than just a canvas and this one here is a bit lining as you can see we're sort of almost dry now so we can remove we can remove some more keep any streaks in that vertical because that's how they would be and there we go the same over here just remove any excess there we go now we can see how it looks with it all done
There we go. Just all looks a bit more realistic now. Not that you can see down in there, but I can. <laughs> so there we are. Right then, guys, that's that. So I will see you all for part two. Uh, quite when that will be, I do not know, because we've just had something arrive today that I've got to get straight on with. So, um, yeah, we'll see you for part two. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.